Hello everyone, my name is Benga Adeyemo. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and I'm also a Power BI Developer. I'm going to be showing you something very interesting today on how you can multiply columns from different tables together using iterating functions. Very interesting. If you remember that in my last video, I discussed with you about row context and filter context. Now, I'm just like another example of how you can apply your knowledge of row context in your calculations. Now, in this scenario now, I have sales table, I have the calendar table, and I have the product table. Now, in the sales table, you see that I only have very few columns there. I have the other dates, I have the other ID, I have the other quantity, and I have the product key. So I have just the product key. So if I want to see more information about the product key, then I will find that in the product table. So the product table has the product key, it has the product name, the manufacturer, the brand, the brand name. Now, the interesting part is that the unit cost price and the unit selling price is on the product key right now i also have my calendar table that has the date the month quarter year and you know like all the attributes of a calendar table now what i want to achieve is that i want to actually calculate my total sales without having uh to you know bring my without having to bring my uh what's it called my unit cost price and my unit selling price inside of my sales table right then before i can run the calculation even though the uh, sales table does not have the unit cost price and the unit selling price, um, I can still get my total sales by multiplying the other quantity here by the unit cost price to get my total cost and multiplying the other quantity here with the unit selling price to get my total sales. And also, I can do a subtraction of that to also get my profits. Now, I don't even need to actually bring in the unit cost price and all the unit selling price inside my sales table before I can achieve that. So that's why I said that your knowledge of row context is very important to make you understand how to write your calculations. Now, I'm going to create a relationship between these three tables. So how am I going to do that? I have the product key here, I have the product key here, so I'm going to link them up, right? So there is a one to many, or well, sorry, many to one relationship, right? Okay. And also my calendar to my other dates. So I'm going to just grab that in here, right? If you don't want to do that, do it like this. There are so another way you can do that. So how can you do that? So let me, for example, delete it here like this. And I'm also going to delete it here, right? Now there is manage relationships that you have here. So if I click on manage relationships, the good thing about this one is that you can actually create multiple relationships and then before you start, before you close up the window. So I click on new relationship. Now from what table to what table? From my calendar table to my sales table. Then I have date here, date here, one to many, right? Active relationship and I click on save, right? Okay, I can also come here again, new relationship. This one is going to be now from my product to sales. It's going to be based on the product key and the product key, yeah, nice. And I click on save, interesting, right? Now when I'm done, I can close the yeah, then I have my relationship, I have it there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you exactly what I want to do today, but I want to also show you what I will have done several years ago, right? When I didn't understand row context very well. So what I will have done several years ago was that I will have used lookup value, right? To bring in the unit selling price and the unit cost price to the sales table, right? Then maybe doing some additional two calculated columns, then summing that up, which is a very long method. But I'm going to show you what I would have done a few years ago and what I will do now because I have a more uh, in-depth knowledge of how rule context works now. Now, what I would have done is this. I would have just said, you know, new column on the sales table, right? I would have said new column. And what I would have just done is to say, you know what? I want to return the unit cost price for each product, right? The unit cost price rather. Said equals to, right? And I'll just say lookup value. Now look up value, what do I want to return here? I want to return the unit cost price from the product table. Then what is the, uh, you know, uh, the matching case between the two tables, the product and the sales table. So I have the product key from the product table and also the product key from the sales table, right? So that will just return for me my unit cost price, right? 
I can just change that to two, two decimal places. I don't want it to be too long. Now, it's looking fine. Now, I will just copy this. I don't want to trouble myself. Just copy this. Click on new column again. All right, to bring in the unit selling price. So, I paste this. I'm just going to change this to what? You know, let me change it to unit selling price. And I'll just change it here also to what? Unit selling price from the product table. Then I press enter. Interesting. Now, I have also the unit selling price, right? So what I would have done, you know, previous years ago, is that I would have just said maybe new column again, and I would have just, you know, called this column probably cost, right? And said equals to, this one is the unit uh, cost price, which I'm dealing with cost now, by the other quantity, by the other quantity in the sales table, right? So I press enter, and that would have given me a new calculated column, like this right now i can also change this to two decimal i don't want it to be a two decimal points now i can also you know do a new column you know i'll say new column again i'll just call this one probably sales and i would have said you know what this is the unit selling price multiplied by what now the order quantity right and i press enter this was what i would have done years back right now what I will now do is this. For me to now get the total cost and total sales, what I will have done years back was to go to my, you know, uh, report Canva and just, you know, maybe probably go to my sales table and say new measure, <laughs> and say new measure, and I will have just said uh, total sales is equal to what? Total sales is equal to the sum, the sum of what? The sum of, of, of what? The total, uh, sorry, the sales column that I have in my sales table right this was what i would have done now if i bring in my card charts if i bring in my card charts now right what will you see here you are going to see my total sales measure and you can see 56.25 right 56.25 right okay what i would have probably done again is to actually also calculate my total cost and say you know what new measure here again new measure here again and you know i would just say total cost equals to what uh, the units oh sorry it's going to be sum sorry sum of what of the cost of the cost column in my sales table and that this was how i would have gotten my uh, total cost so i bring in another card chart again for example then I would have just said total cost, I drag it here, then I would have seen my total cost. Now, if I don't want to go through all of this stress, mm -hmm. if I don't want to start, you know, look at the stress I had to go through, I had to first uh, create a uh, calculated column, two calculated column by using the local value to bring back, to bring in my unit cost price and my unit selling price, you know, into the sales table, then doing another calculated column again to multiply that by the other quantity for cost and also for sales i don't need to go through all of this stress now let me show you what i would have done so let me just delete all the columns i created i'm just going to delete all the columns that i created one by one then i'm going to show you a very simple method that you would have used right so i click on delete i'm deleting the second one i'm going to delete the third one i'm deleting the third one and i'm also going to delete the last one okay so now i am back to how the table was before i went to bring in all these four columns in fact the way you are even adding more you know the more you have more calculated columns the more your refresh becomes slower and all of those so it's not even good right so and it will create some kind of um, circular dependency also because one column is depending on the other and all of those things so it's not even advisable so what you will have done in this scenario is just to write just one calculation that will solve all of this problem so what do i need to do in this case okay let me go and delete these ones let me delete the measure i created before okay it's getting interesting it's getting interesting so what i will now do now is to use the iterating function the sum x and the function called related right so related works on the many side of the relationship which is the sales table so i'm going to show you how that works so you do if you remember that in my last video I talked to you guys about row context, right? And I said that row context is 
uh, that concept in Power BI that has to do with uh, when you create a calculation and the evaluation is on a row by row basis, right? Now I'm going to now apply that now in this in this scenario. So what I'm going to do in this scenario now is to just go to my sales table, uh, a new measure. So let me first calculate my. I'm going to calculate my total costs. Wow, if you are wondering how am I going to do that when I don't have, uh, you know, the column side by side. I have it in different tables. Product table has the unit cost and the unit selling price, and the sales table has the product key. Also, the product table too has the product key. Now, I'm going to I'm going to say some x, right? And I'm going to call the table the sales table. Okay, what columns am I using? I'm using the order quantity from the sales table. Now, you know, I don't have so okay, so I'm multiplying that by so I want you to multiply it by the unit cost price that exists in the product table. So I'm going to use the function called related, right? Related. And it's going to ask me what column do I want to, you know. So now related works, uh, I said, is being used on the main side of the, of the relationship. And the sales table is the main side of the relationship. That's number one. Number two is that for related to work, there must be a relationship between the tables, right? So there's a relationship between the sales table and the product table by the virtue of the product key. Right, the product key is connecting the product table and the sales table. So I need uh, the unit selling price, so the unit cost price rather, because I'm dealing with total cost now. I need the unit cost price from the product table, right? I'm going to multiply that by the other quantity that I have in my sales table, right? And I close the bracket. Isn't that interesting? It's interesting. It means that I don't have to do that, you know, all those uh, stress of bringing in units uh, cost, units uh, selling price from my product table into my sales table, and I start doing another calculation, another calculated column, and start going through all that long process, right? All I need to do is to just use my iterating function, which we evaluate on a row by row basis. And for the unit cost price, it's going to return the corresponding unit cost price, right? It's going to return the corresponding unit cost price of each product key that I have in my product table. Isn't that not very interesting? Saves you a lot of time. You don't have to stress yourself, right? So now I have this, and I'm going to just, you know, click on commit. Interesting, then I'm going to just drag what I got, my measure, I'm going to drag into this into it here. And what did you see? 25.06M, that was the same value we had when we had to go through that long process. And we just did that in less than 10 seconds. Very interesting. Now I'm going to do the same thing also I'm going to do the same thing also for the um, total sales. Hmm, interesting. So I click on new measure. I've copied that already. I click on new measure again. I click on new measure. And I'm just going to paste that. I'm going to go through all the, all the other stress. And I'm just going to change some things here. So I just say this one is total sales. And this time around, I'm going to be using the unit selling price from the product table. So I don't need to trouble myself. I already have it here. I'm just going to press commit. Right, so you see how I got both my total cost and my total sales, you know, even though the unit selling price and the unit cost and the um quantity column is they are in different tables, right? So I bring in my total sales. Wow, interesting. So I have my total cost here and I have my total sales. Wow, so now let me go and create my profit. Let me go and create my profit. So I'm just going to, you know, that's very easy anyway. Just come to my sales here again. I just say new measure. I just say new measure, new measure, new measure, new measure. So I'm just going to call this profits and I'll say equals to total sales minus what? My total costs. Interesting. And I click on commit. Now I can bring in another cat chart, another cat chart, another cat chart. Then I can drop the profit inside the cat chart. Wow, this is my profit. Now, let's now apply some filter context to all of these measures that we have created. So, we can, you know, apply filter context in so many ways, just like I showed you in my previous video. Uh, so, let's bring in a matrix table. So, I bring in a matrix table like this. Let's just do one filter context and that's it for this video. So, I will just say, maybe, for example, I just want to see uh, probably the, uh, you know, the manufacturer. And um, let me, okay, let's let me leave it the way it is now. And I can just break it down. I can break down my, you know, my total cost by manufacturer, my total sales by manufacturer, and my profit by manufacturer. So you're just going to break everything down by the different manufacturers. So you see how interesting this is. Now, in summary, what I achieved here 
is that I calculated my total cost, calculated my total sales and uh, profits. Now I did that without having to, you know, go to my sales table and I started, you know, maybe start uh, bringing in my unit selling price column and my units uh, cost price column from the product table using lookup value. I don't need to start doing all of that, right? And now multiplying that, blah, blah, blah. That's a long process. What I have to do is just to write one very simple formula, some X and related function. Easy peasy. So guys, thank you for watching. I'm sure I'm going to see you again in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Bye.